Hello everyone. Welcome to the introduction part of ultrasound physics. My name is Amit Jaiswal and one of the ED consultant at Kings Mill Hospital and I'm also the training program director for ultrasound in East Midlands. So in this brief presentation I'm going to talk about the RKM requirement for you to be signed off. We'll talk about certain physics and nobology and how to optimize an image while saving a picture. So POCUS curriculum was revised in 2021 by RKM. In the past, we used to use point of care ultrasound in only four clinical applications, that top four, but uh, RCAM has added fascia iliaca compartment block and shock assessment. So understanding ultrasound physics, we all know the ultrasound wave or a, is, a, is a type of sound wave and it is a kind of a mechanical energy. This mechanical energy is generated by application of electrical energy across the probe which has got special crystals called lead zirconate titanium crystals. These probes are really, really expensive because of these crystals. Now, the frequency which we use in ultrasound or point of care is from 1 to 20 megahertz. It is far more than what a human being can hear or animals or birds or even insects can hear. Coming on to the ultrasound device, Ultrasound device or point of care ultrasound which we use in emergency department or acute setting is a, basically a laptop device. It has got a monitor, keyboard and several transducers or probes and then you have got some accessories such as CPU, printer or storage device. Let's understand some commonly used transducers or probes in acute setting. There are three commonly used probes. The first one is the linear probe which has got a flat face and has got the highest frequency. The second one is a curvilinear probe which has got a curved face. The third probe is called phased array probe. Um, things to remember is that curvilinear probe and phased array probe, they have got frequency which is slightly lower compared to the linear probe. The lower frequency probes are used for deeper structures such as ab abdomen, aorta or heart while linear probe which has got high frequency is used for superficial structures such as nerve, tendon, IV axis, foreign body, etc, etc. Moving on to the probe orientation and scanning planes. Scanning planes in ultrasound is very similar to as if you are doing an x-ray. It has got two planes, so AP or lateral, but here we call it as transverse and longitudinal plane. Transverse means you are transverse to the area of interest and long tunnel means you are parallel to the area of interest. Now one thing to remember is the probe orientation. Each probe has got a dot or some form of marker. So when we are doing a scan in transverse plane, make sure the dot, like the dot here, is in, in it is towards the right of the patient. While if you are doing a scan in a long or long tunnel section, make sure the dot is towards the head. Uh, if you see the screen, you will see the dot appearing on the screen or some form of marker that dot represents the right of the patient in transverse plane or towards the head of the patient in a longitudinal plane. Now this probe orientation is slightly different if you are doing an echocardiogram. It is, it, is, um, it is just the opposite. Let's understand several definitions uh, commonly used in ultrasound to define certain structures. For example, I'm going to talk about echogenicity. Echogenicity is how bright uh, area of interest appears compared to the surrounding structure. For example, here I'm looking inside the liver and I can see a rounded hypoechoic area compared to the surrounding structure. So it can be hypoechoic, it could be isoechoic, or it could be anechoic. Moving on to acoustic impedance. Acoustic is sound, impedance is resistance. So resistance to the flow of sound wave is acoustic impedance. Now, higher the density of a given structure, more is the impedance. For example, bone has got more resist resistance compared to blood and, and, and the air subsequently. Resolution. Resolution is the ability of the ultrasound device to distinguish two closely placed objects as separate. Now, this resolution also happens in time. So understanding in, in space. So here we can see there are two dots present. 
if you have good good quality of machine and the resolution is nice these two dots will appear as distinct well if you have got poor quality it may not be able to uh, resolve the two dots now resolution in time now here I'm talking about whether my ultrasound device device is able to pick a certain structure or certain movement in X time or Y time this is quite significant when we are trying to do an echo so we want to know at X second what myocardial valve is doing whether it is closed or it is open so that's a resolution in time moving on to nobology or buttons which we will be using to optimize or save certain images so the first one is freeze so as soon as you hit freeze button the image becomes static on the screen and it, it can be saved so then freeze you can save it the third one is caliper which allows you to measure the size or diameter of a certain structure the fourth one is B and M mode button basically when we scan a patient we use either B mode M mode color dropper and there are other settings but here we are going to focus on B mode which is the brightness mode so let's have a look so you have got a freeze button then which can be saved and there is a caliper here in this uh, machine you have got freeze here and then you have got save and then you have got b and m mode on this corner image optimization you can use three settings such as gain tgc and depth which allows you to get a good quality of image especially when you you are saving the images for assessment so when the sound waves travel from one structure to another structure and by the time it reflects back and come back to the machine uh, where the images form it loses a lot of energy deeper the structure more it suffers now gain allows you to amplify the returning signals the the strength of returning signals so that the um, structures which are deeper can be compensated and the other setting is called tgc time gain compensation it is similar to gain but it allows you to selectively amplify the returning signal of certain depths so gain will amplify all the signals tgc will allow you to choose if you want to amplify signals from superficial middle or deeper structures depth depth allows you to choose how far you want to send your sound waves try to use least depth as possible for the organ of interest so for example uh, you are scanning kidney and your kidney is located at say 12 centimeter depth try to use 12 to 13 or 14 centimeter depth try not to go 20 centimeter depth because your sound wave will be the energy of the sound waves will be wasted wasted and the depth appears on this side moving on to artifacts the artifacts in ultrasound are very similar to artifacts which we see in x-rays or CT scan it just gives you a full impression of something which is not existing or misinterpretation of a given structure artifacts in ultrasound are not always nuisance as compared to in x-rays and CT scan uh, because it can help us to differentiate between certain structures so I'm going to talk about four artifacts commonly uh, encountered the first one is acoustic shadow second one is enhancement mirror image and reverberation acoustic shadow is the shadow to the sound waves so if a sound wave are, no, are not able to pass through certain structure it leaves a shadow for example here I'm looking at a gallbladder which has got an n echoic fluid field structure and then there is a hyper echoic structure leaving a shadow behind so that shadow is called acoustic shadow acoustic enhancement is opposite to shadow here the echoes behind a area of interest is bright or higher in amplitude for example here I'm looking at a, a, a urinary bladder and you can clearly see there is an area of increased echo and it happens because the sound wave has not lost much energy here compared to the surrounding structure hence the sound waves coming from this part of the area is having high energy compared to surrounding structures and it is perceived as bright mirror image as it says there is a duplication of a area of interest for example I'm um, looking inside a liver and you have got a diaphragm and that's a kidney now if I look uh, closely I can see a hyper echoic small pathology but I can see another pathology very similar just behind the diaphragm does it mean there are two pathology no it's the phenomena of mirror image so when this ultrasound 
coming from one corner of the probe strikes comes back images form but there are sound waves coming from this part of the ultrasound probe which strikes the diaphragm very smooth surface and the sound waves are deflected it hits the area of interest comes back goes back to the machine another image is formed now the second wave has taken a longer time so machine thinks because it has taken a long time it must be located deep and hence a false image is formed that's mirror image reverberation artifacts are false echo which are repeatedly reflected from uh, a structure which has got high caustic impedance such as needle so especially when you're doing IV axis or central line you can see the needle here but you can see multiple parallel lines and that parallel lines are called reverberation artifact another important artifact is called edge shadow as the name says there is a shadow at the edges so it happens when you are scanning a structure which has got smooth surface such as the uh, uh, gallbladder or you are looking at the kidneys at the upper pole or lower pole because of smooth surface you get a shadow now why that shadow happens because when the sound waves hits at the corner it is it is either reflected back or refracted away from the track which means there are no sound waves traveling behind the edges which means there will be no sound waves coming from behind. If there is no sound wave coming, machine will depict or give a picture as if there is there is a, a shadow behind. So you have to understand that if you get a shadow, it doesn't mean that there is a stone or a caustic shadow happening. It is the edge shadowing. Let's understand Doppler shift and color Doppler. We all have experience with when you are on the street, if there is an ambulance moving around, you know if it's coming towards you or going away. So if it is coming towards you, that there is a positive Doppler shift or there is a change in frequency which is added together. And that positive Doppler shift is given red color in ultrasound. It applies similarly to the ambulance if it is moving away. So if the sound is dying down, which means there is a negative Doppler shift or the change of frequency or Doppler shift is negative, you know the ambulance is going away. And that negative Doppler shift is given blue color. So hence, color Doppler can be used to detect flow in a vessel, and you can find out the direction of flow, and you can use a formula to identify the velocity of the flow of the uh, uh, blood. A very practical example, you must understand when you are doing a Doppler, a color Doppler uh, on a vessel, especially if you have been asked to scan somebody's foot to see if there is a blood flow or there is a pulse or not, make sure the angle of incidence is not 90 degree because the Doppler shift, which is delta D, if it is 90 degree, which is cos alpha, it will be zero. So cos 90 is zero. Quite important. So angle of incidence should not be 90 degree. Any angle, but not 90 degree. Otherwise, you will not have a color Doppler flow. Another terminology, aliasing. So if I'm looking at a vessel and I'm doing a color Doppler, if I see blue color and red color, that gives an impression that the blood is flowing both away and towards the probe. Does it mean there is a mixing of blood? This can be easily explained by a phenomena of aliasing. So let's understand this, this uh, aliasing phenomena. So if I'm walking into a room and I see a stick hanging at six o'clock, I go out and come back in 15 minutes and I find the stick which has moved from 6 o'clock to 9 o'clock position. Now after 15 minutes again, it has moved from 9 to 12. Now I can say two things. Either every 15 minutes this stick is moving anti-clockwise 3 fourth of a circle. 3 fourth of a circle. Or I can say every 15 minutes this stick is moving clockwise 1 fourth of a circle. 1 fourth of a circle. And how, how can we clarify that? It's easy. If I take the sampling or if I walk into the room more often than every 15 minutes, which means if I walk into the room and the stick is at 7 o'clock position after one minute, after two minutes, if it is 8 o'clock and so forth, then we know that the stick is going clockwise and not anti-clockwise. That makes sense. So this is the end of the presentation. Let me summarize to what we have talked about in this brief presentation. So we have gone through probes. So we know there are three commonly used probes. The first one is linear, 
which has got highest frequency for superficial structures. We've talked about curvilinear and phasor probe, which has got low frequency and are used for deeper structures. <clears throat> we have talked about certain knobs. The first one is freeze, then we have got save, and then the other one is caliper. How to optimize a given image? We can use gain setting, which allows to amplify all the returning signals. We have talked about TGC, which is time gain compensation, which allows to compensate the amplitude of returning signals from the area of choice. So if you want to optimize or sorry, increase the uh, uh, amplitude from superficial structure or deeper structures. Depth allows us to throw sound waves to a given depth or depth which we choose. Uh, we have talked about certain terms. The first one is echogenicity or how bright a given structure is. Is it hyperechoic, anechoic or isoechoic compared to the surrounding structures? We have talked about uh, acoustic impedance or impedance to this flow of sound waves, which can give a shadow. We have also talked about resolution is how nice or how good your equipment is. And is it able to resolve uh, two very close place uh, structures? We have talked about artifacts. The first one is mirror image, which gives a, a which allows one structure to be duplicated. And we have talked about acoustic shadow. Um, because of the acoustic impedance mismatch, there is a shadow behind a given area. We have talked about edge shadow, a shadow at the edges, such as around the gallbladder or around the uh, urinary bladder. There is acoustic enhancement, where there is a enhanced sound wave behind a given structure. That happens especially when the sound wave has not lost much energy passing through one structure. We have talked about Doppler, a Doppler shift, a positive Doppler shift is given red color, negative Doppler shift is given blue color. We have talked about phenomena of aliasing, which happens because of undersampling, and it can be easily correlated when we look at the uh, spinning of a wheel of a car. So when the car wheel starts to spin, it appears the, the wheel is going in one direction, and after it has achieved certain speed, it appears to go into other direction. And this happens because our eyes are not able to capture the image at the speed as which the wheels are rotating. And I hope that makes sense. Thank you. Thank you very much.